Known as the Godfather, Captain America, and the Iceman, Troy Aikman was a legendary quarterback who became one of the faces of the Dallas Cowboys during the 1990s. Aikman led the Cowboys to three Super Bowl victories, earning Super Bowl MVP honors in 1993, after their win in Super Bowl XXVII. As the first overall pick in the 1989 NFL Draft, he played 12 seasons in the NFL, all with the Cowboys, and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2006. Aikman was known for his steady leadership and precision passing, particularly in high-stakes games. He was a six-time Pro Bowl selection and finished his career with over 32,000 passing yards and 165 touchdown passes. His ability to perform in the clutch, particularly during Dallas's dominant stretch in the 1990s, cemented his legacy as one of the all-time great quarterbacks. But how good was Troy Aikman actually? To understand his inspiration and path to greatness, we must travel back to where he started. Troy Aikman was born on November 21, 1966. He spent his early childhood in Cerritos, California. When he was 12 years old, his family moved to Henrietta, Oklahoma. There, he played football and baseball at Henrietta High School and achieved All-State honors. Aikman was also notable for winning the 1983 Oklahoma High School State Championship in typing. In college, Aikman initially joined the University of Oklahoma to play football under coach Barry Switzer. The New York Mets had offered him a baseball contract, but he chose to pursue football instead. In 1984, he made history as the first freshman to start at quarterback for Oklahoma since World War II. In his first full season in 1985, Aikman led his team to victories over Minnesota, Kansas State, and Texas in the Red River Shootout. Unfortunately, he suffered a broken ankle during a game against the Miami Hurricanes, which ended his season. His team still went on to win the 1985 National Championship with freshman quarterback Jamel Holyway. Aikman decided to transfer to UCLA due to Holyway becoming the established starter. At UCLA, Aikman was under the guidance of coach Terry Donahue, who ran a more pass-oriented offense. Although he had to sit out a year due to transfer rules, Aikman led the Bruins to an impressive 20-4 record over two seasons. In his junior year, he was named the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year, throwing for 2,525 yards and 17 touchdowns. He helped the Bruins achieve a 10-2 record and a win in the 1987 Aloha Bowl against the Florida Gators. As a senior, Aikman threw for 2,771 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. He won the 1988 Davey O'Brien Award for the best quarterback, becoming the first UCLA player to do so. He was also a consensus All-American and finished third in the 1988 Heisman Trophy voting. The Bruins matched their previous season's victory total with a 10-2 record and ended the season with a 17-3 win over the Arkansas Razorbacks in the 1989 Cotton Bowl Classic. During the Cotton Bowl Classic, the media speculated that Aikman might be the next quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and Cowboys head coach Tom Landry watched him practice. Aikman finished his college career as UCLA's second all-time leading passer. In 2008, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, and on November 28, 2014, UCLA retired his number eight jersey during halftime of a game against Stanford. Troy Aikman was chosen as the first overall pick in the 1989 NFL Draft by the Dallas Cowboys. On February 25, 1989, Jerry Jones, the new owner of the Cowboys, made a big change by firing the team's longtime coach, Tom Landry, and hiring Jimmy Johnson as the new head coach. A few months later, Johnson used the NFL's supplemental draft to pick Steve Walsh, a quarterback he had worked with at the University of Miami. Despite this, Aikman won the starting quarterback position, and Walsh was traded early in the 1990 season. Aikman's first NFL preseason game was on August the 26th, 1989, against the Denver Broncos. His regular season debut didn't go well, as the Cowboys lost 28-0 to the New Orleans Saints. However, the next week, Aikman threw his first NFL touchdown pass, a 65-yard completion to Michael Irvin. Despite this, the Atlanta Falcons intercepted two of Aikman's passes and won the game. In a game against the Phoenix Cardinals, Aikman threw 
for 379 yards, setting a rookie record for the NFL. Despite his efforts, Aikman finished his rookie season with an 0-11 record as a starter, completing 155 of 293 passes for 1,749 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. In the following year, the Cowboys drafted Emmitt Smith, a running back from the University of Florida, in the first round of the 1990 NFL Draft. Along with Smith and Irvin, Aikman helped the Cowboys achieve a 7-7 record for the season. Unfortunately, Aikman was injured during the 15th game against the Philadelphia Eagles. The team lost that game and also the next one against the Atlanta Falcons, missing out on the playoffs by just one game. In 1991, Aikman led the Cowboys to a 6-4 record in the first 10 games of the season. He was playing well until he was injured again in Week 12 during a game against the undefeated Washington Redskins. Steve Boyerline stepped in and helped the Cowboys finish the season with a 5-0 record, earning them the number 5 seed in the playoffs. In 1992, Troy Aikman had a standout year, setting personal bests with 302 completions, 3,445 passing yards, and 23 touchdown passes. He led the Dallas Cowboys to a record-setting 13 regular season wins, which was the best in the NFC that year. During the playoffs, Aikman made headlines by breaking Joe Montana's record of 83 consecutive passes without an interception, throwing 89 passes without one. The Cowboys won their playoff games, first defeating the Philadelphia Eagles and then beating the San Francisco 49ers, who were considered the top team in the NFC. The Cowboys won the NFC Championship 30-20, and Aikman played a crucial role with two key passes that helped them reach their first Super Bowl since 1978. In Super Bowl 27, held in the Rose Bowl, which was also the home stadium of his alma mater UCLA, Aikman led the Cowboys to a decisive 52-17 victory over the Buffalo Bills. He was named the Super Bowl MVP after completing 22 of 30 passes for 273 yards and four touchdowns. In 1993, the Cowboys finished the regular season with a 12-4 record, the best in the NFC. During the playoffs, Aikman guided the Cowboys to another home victory, this time against the Green Bay Packers, led by a young Brett Favre. The Cowboys then faced the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship. Although Aikman played well, he suffered a concussion in the game after a hit from 49ers defensive tackle Dana Stubblefield. With coach Jimmy Johnson leaving the team in March 1994, Jerry Jones hired Barry Switzer, who had previously coached Aikman at Oklahoma. In 1994, the Cowboys had the second best record in the NFC, but Aikman was sidelined by injuries. The Cowboys won their divisional playoff game against the Green Bay Packers, but lost to the 49ers in the NFC Championship game. In 1995, Aikman passed for over 3,300 yards and led the Cowboys to the best record in the NFC once again. Despite being injured during a high-profile game against the 49ers, Aikman and the Cowboys made it to the NFC Championship and then won Super Bowl 30 against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 27-17. Aikman threw one touchdown pass in the game. In 1996, Aikman helped the Cowboys win another NFC East Division title and a home playoff game where they defeated the Minnesota Vikings 40-15. However, they lost in the divisional playoffs to the Carolina Panthers 26-17. In 1997, Aikman had his third consecutive season with over 3,000 passing yards, but the Cowboys finished with a disappointing 6-10 record and missed the playoffs. Switzer, who had never experienced a losing season before, resigned after the season. In 1999, the Cowboys started the season strong, with Aikman throwing a career-high five touchdown passes in a game against the Washington Redskins. That year marked the final playoff appearance for Aikman, as he, along with teammates Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith, played together for the last time. The Cowboys finished 8-8 eight and, eight and lost in the wild-card playoff game to the Minnesota Vikings, 27-10. The 2000 season was Aikman's final year in professional football. He suffered several concussions that year, and the Cowboys went through multiple quarterbacks. His last game was against the Washington Redskins.
where he was hit by linebacker LeVar Arrington and sustained his 10th and final concussion. In the 2001 offseason, Aikman was waived just before he was due a large contract extension. He announced his retirement on April 9th after failing to find another team. Aikman finished his career as the Cowboys' all-time leading passer with 32,942 yards. His 90 wins in the 1990s were the most by any quarterback in a decade until Peyton Manning surpassed him with 115 wins in the 2000s. Aikman is currently third on that list, behind Tom Brady, who had 122 wins in the 2010s. In a radio interview from late December 2013, Troy Aikman revealed that the main reason he retired from football was because of ongoing back issues. He shared that, although he had surgery on his back after Super Bowl, and it went well, by the time of his final season, he was constantly dealing with back pain. Aikman mentioned that while the hit from linebacker LeVar Arrington was significant and ended his 2000 season, it was the persistent back pain that really forced him to retire not the concussion from that hit. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.